So long, gay Lakitu. On a magic carpet ride. She's got a good sense of humor. Hello! Welcome to Witness Day! So guys, I finally did it. I made a video for every single game on the NES retro video game system. I'm super proud of it, and you know, we're finally, we're finally to the end, and I, I did save a pretty good game for last. An absolute legend for the NES. Some would say the best game. I have saved Super Mario Bros. 3. What did I think of it? Well, it's all right, I guess. I did have a bit of a problem with this game very early on. You see, the title screen, there's no music. As a YouTuber, if you're not recording audio, that means that something is definitely wrong. I thought for sure that Super Mario Bros. 3 of all games would have a title song. Seriously, I, 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 there is a song. It doesn't go like Well, whatever. Eventually I press start and then I got some tunes and well, let me just get this out of the way, you know. As far as the NES and music goes, this game is just kind of amazing. Marry me, Koji Kondo. It's so good. Oh my goodness, just telling you about it is a waste of my breath. You have ears. You can hear the music. And I'll be playing it throughout the whole video. I mean, I'll probably use other songs, but look, as far as the NES goes, this game is probably my favorite. All right, let's hop in. So one thing I want to say off the bat is that I was not a big fan of these controls. Well, initially. Mario has a lot of weight behind him, and these controls take a lot of getting used to. But the good news is these first levels are easy and fun and really let you acclimate to Mario's momentum and jump arcs. By the time you hop onto that first airship, you have the controls down pat. But before you even get to the airship, there's a lot to do on the overworld alone. It's amazing and fun. You got hammer bros wandering the land searching for blood. Toad houses with items and extra lives to be earned. There's also this memory minigame that I was never any good at, but with the NES mini suspense states, I was finally able to master it. But eventually I got to the first castle, and unlike other Mario games, these castles are friendly. Unfortunately, the king has been transformed into a puppy, so I gotta hop aboard Koopa's airship to get the magic wand to change him back. And these levels range from pretty dang good to, oh, just shoot me now! So the first airship is just an excellent tutorial teaching you what airships are going to be like. You got some auto-scrolling and you also learn that you are going to get shot at. A lot. So you hop into the boss room and then you just murder one of Bowser's children. Just snap their little turtle neck. Then you take the magic wand and change the king back. After that you get a letter from the princess with a really good and rare item. The P-Wing. But like with all good and rare items. Uh, I'm out of MP. Then use an ether. But but you can't buy ether. It's the final battle. But I only have 85 of them. After that, we arrive at the desert, and I remember the desert. As I mentioned, I played the all-star version of this game at a friend's house as a kid. And if I remember correctly, we never made it past the second world. It was like really hard. I think that Little Chet sucked at video games. You know, at least a little more than Big Chet does. Yeah, this part with the jumping fire was impossible. You're a stupid kid, aren't you? you hold right, hold right, boom. Hey, you, 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 you walk by. How do you not figure you stupid? However, this part with the Koopa was just super satisfying to break all of those blocks. Oh, dang, I, I, I missed one. I'll never be complete now. But there was one terror that stuck in my mind. The sun. Okay, this level was straight up impossible as a kid. The sun was mad at you. Also, he tracked your character at the constant speed. Also, he was really mad at you. And when he swooped down, oh, it was hard to dodge. Also, he was really mad at you. What do I do? What did I do? <gasps> I killed him. This caused the gravitational pull of Earth to stop, and it was flung into the reaches of space. The world went dark. The plants, unable to perform photosynthesis, perished as the surface temperature of the Earth dropped considerably. But hey, I literally killed a childhood fear! So the King of Desertland was turned into a spider, and Morton's airship was fantastic. The fight was fun with the raised elevations, and I was able to save the king. So I got another letter from the princess with an item to hoard and went on to World 3. Now, let's be honest, 5-year-old Chet sucked at Desertland, and 25-year-old Chet didn't do too much better. But World 3 is much easier. These levels were a breeze. Heck, there were some that were only 30 seconds long. Except for the level with the man-eating fish. Just one gulp and you are dead. 
Seriously, this level was a pain. Look at this! I killed him, so I'm fine sitting in the water. Hoo hoo hoo! I killed him, I was so cool. What the heck?! He literally came out of nowhere! But hey, I got past the fish and made it to Wendy's airship, and it's a bit harder than the others, so I had a really tough time making it to Wendy with full HP. So the boss fight was a little harder. She even has this cool mechanic where she puts more attacks bouncing around the room, but let's be honest, Koopa kids are so easy to kill. One, two, three, you suck! So World 4 had an awesome gimmick. Everything is giant! Big ol' Koopa! Big ol' Block! I really loved this world, and not a single one of these levels made me want to kill myself. Except maybe the airship. Gaming Sin number 7! Auto Scrollers! This level has no challenge except for fighting the urge to turn the game off because the auto scrolling here is slow! It's so slow! There is no difficulty, but it wastes so much time! Look, we're all gonna die someday, myself included, but I have to live with the fact that I spent over half of my lifetime waiting for this freaking stage to scroll over to the pipe so I could jump in, kill the kid, and then get a letter from the princess. But you know, as a rule, auto scrollers don't have to suck. And the next world really demonstrates that because there are three fantastic auto scrollers. There's this one where the speed that I move at is probably the speed that I would've gone through the level. Jumping from these platforms, trying not to get lit on fire by this flying dude, and there's this level where these platforms are carrying me away from the right side of the screen. So not only am I not forced to wait around, but I actually have a real chance of not being able to make it in time unless I move fast. Heck, even Roy's airship wasn't terrible. It was a little faster at the scrolling, but basically the only thoughts going through my head were not, ugh, this is taking so long, just let me play the game. No, the only thought going through my head was, holy crap, these guys are trying to kill me. Don't get shot, don't get shot. See, this is how you do an auto scroller. Unfortunately, it all leads to the ice level. I consider myself a fairly reasonable man. I like my meat cooked, my women to have a pulse, and my anime dubbed. But you know, since I watch anime, I don't really don't really get women with pulses, or, you know, at all. But the point I was trying to get across is that I'm fairly tolerant. I like levels like, with w water, ice, you know, in like 95% of the games I play. And, you know, it spices up the gameplay, we get some nice variety. But Super Mario Bros. 3 really makes me reconsider my uh, tolerant stance. The momentum is awful. Mario already has terrible traction, and this world just gets rid of the rest of it. And underwater is even worse. I mean, Mario 1 did just fine. He could easily glide through the water. But here you start out slow, and after three strokes he shoots off like a missile, usually into an enemy. But you can get the frog suit. That is a fun power-up. Man, I wish there were more of them because they are so fun to hop around in. Another fun power-up that this game is way too stingy with is the Tanuki suit. I only had a couple, so I really hung on to them. But there's one fortress in this game where it's pretty much mandatory. Seriously, I lost over 10 lives here before I decided, you know what, I want to try it as a raccoon. And it made one heck of a difference because you can turn invincible for a few seconds. And you still have the glide ability. It really just made this level fair and fun. But hey, since I'm dipping into my rare power-ups, there was also this one level with a perfect sniper to look to. After a certain amount of bullcrap deaths, I figured, this is stupid, I'm using my P-Wing. And so I flew over the whole thing. Pure skill. <laughs> The airship was fine though, but the fight with Lemmy was really cool. See, he's bouncing on this ball. Man, he'd have a promising future career as a performer if Mario didn't just bash his skull in. World 7 has some awful levels. Now, I have Super Mario Maker, and I've beaten some pretty obnoxious stuff, but I was excited for this game. Miyamoto knew what he was doing when he was making this game. He wasn't gonna stick me into a pit with a bunch of invisible blocks over my head. Uh, Miyamoto, how could you do this to me? But there was another level that couldn't even be put into Super Mario Maker. It was incredibly amateurish. The only power up here is the Fire Flower. And these pipes don't even lead you out of it. But there is one block in the first room that turns all these blocks into coins. And I collected over 800 coins. But here's the thing, hitting the P-Switch doesn't do anything. There is nothing in this room that helps you get out of the level. The only way to beat this level is to use your own leaf. There is no way to get a leaf in this level. But, what you do is you ignore the first room, you, you ignore the P-Switch, and then you get into this room. But you don't head to the right, you actually head to the left. But not all the way to the left. You start running to the left, then as soon as you can start flying, you, you fly up, and, and then there's the pipe here. That's, that's how you beat this level. What? What? 
Now I go to Ludwig's airship, which I gotta say isn't really as much of an airship as it is a bunch of disconnected platforms, but it is a good auto-scroller. See this, Larry? This is how you make an auto-scroller level. But I beat the level and the king is a, a rabbi. Huh. Kinda of cool. But you know what isn't cool? Peach has been kidnapped! I, 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 I love the letter from Bowser. It's just so nonchalant. It just starts off with, yo. Which leads to the final world, which is just full of tough, but fun levels. First off, we've got this tank level, which is fast-paced and crazy. I really enjoy having to concentrate so I don't get shot. But at the end, I really ran into a problem. Ah, what? I'm, I'm stuck. What, what is this? Cuphead? I, I can't get out! The battleship level is pretty good too. Like the last level, I spent a good amount of time just trying not to stand in front of the barrel when it fires. Unfortunately, this doesn't always work. Is this how I die? Frightened like a child, lazy and numb. And then we got some real levels. Only two of them though. The first one was pretty frustrating, but I mean, come on. It's the last world. Should I really expect anything but blood and tears? I mean, look at the overworld. There are skulls everywhere. The second level was probably pretty bad as well, but when I was on the overworld, I accidentally hit B and then A, and I activated the P-Wing. And honestly, it would be just rude to squander Peachy Keen's gift. So I just flew over the entire thing. After that was a maze fortress. This level wasn't any fun. It's just annoying. So it has 36 doors in it, and only one of them helps you. And here's the thing. In the very back of the castle, there are these two hidden blocks. Punch them open, and a P-switch will appear. If you go ahead and activate that, the door appears. At last, my salvation. Nope. This is a dead end. At this point, you might think, oh, well, let's backtrack through the castle. I might have missed something. No! What you do here is you hit the switch, and this is the best part. You ignore the door and keep going to what you know is a dead end. And then you can enter that. <laughs> this took forever for me to find out. Well, after those fun and games, I have one level before I get to Bowser's Castle. And since I've been hoarding those P-Wings like TLC is gonna show up and put me on the season finale of that show, I figured, you know what, the last level might be fun, but Peach gave me these presents and it would just be rude not to use them. Oh my goodness, just look at that wall of lead. It's, oh, it's just really too bad I'm missing all that, uh, fun. All right, Bowser's Castle. It's a really good level. A fine level of challenge, but I did make it through. And then Bowser killed me. So I went through again, this time wearing a Tanuki suit. This just made his fireball attack worthless. Then I tricked him into killing himself, and then... I win. Then I saved the princess, and oh, hey, that's kind of cool. It's the exact same character model from Super Mario Bros. 2. <laughs> Oh, this is also great. She's got she's got a good sense of humor. Well, let's go to the live action part of this video so Mario and Peach can have a good old fashioned makeout sesh. So, this has been Wednesday. I've laughed at the writing of Star Tropics. I cried because of the difficulty of Ghosts and Goblins, and I even had that weird foray where I played a Sega Genesis game. Honestly, I have truly enjoyed this, and, and it's just been a blast. And if you caught just this one episode, or all 30 of them, I honestly hope that I, I, I could have entertained you at least somewhat. But I believe it's time to retire this. There were a lot of fun games on it. You know, I'm wondering which is my favorite. You know, I, maybe, what were my 10 favorite? Which isn't even a segue to next Wednesday's video.